those families are hurt. Yeah, absolutely. They hurt. So, you know, some of them was probably fathers. Yeah. And, uh, pray for them. Pray for that city. I felt the city. I felt the pain from the city. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody that was involved with it. And uh, God will uh, comfort them. Yeah. Comfort them in, in their time of, of hurt. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only them, but we continue to pray for all of our children. Yes. Uh, that God will continue to, to deal with our children, even though they might not be here. Right. I know the Lord is still dealing with them. Yes. Because they've been raised up in church. Right. Now, we right. talked about that Monday. Monday. Night. Yes. They will soon depart. Right. So pray that God will bring them back to the church. Yes. Lord. Amen. I feel an influx coming. Amen. 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 I, I, want some of my, I want all of my children to be saved. Yes. So yes. Uh, let's continue to pray for them. Uh, remember the bereaved families throughout the city. Mm -hmm. uh, that God will uh, comfort their hearts. Yes. And remember Christian ministries. Yes. The Lord will continue to anoint this house. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I feel his anointing. Yes. So yes. let's pray one for another and let's love, love one another. One another. And yes. Instead of uh, being against each other. Right. No division in the church. Right. Yeah. Amen. So uh, let us pray on that. Uh, there's so much, so many other things we can pray for. Yeah. You know, the Lord knows our heart. He knows. Amen. My brother. I just ask the saints to pray for me and my household and my family. And uh, I have an aunt who had surgery today. She's an aunt that's very special. Yeah. She's in the hospital with a lot of pain. Yeah. And she's asking for. Amen. Amen. Benz's uh, jacket. Um, I just got to say, too, uh, continue your prayers for me as I am looking for another job. I have two um, interviews lined up, and they are to be able to receive more money. Amen. And, and good hours. I mean, it's $20 right now. Oh. I'm trying to go that way. So there's a prayer for me out here tomorrow, and then I'll interview on Tuesday. So um, whichever one goes. My sister? Well, we all like to ask the church to stand and let's be led in prayer by Elder Gary. Amen. Amen. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you. One more time. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing, separating the atmosphere. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Each and every request. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask that you just bless the people, comfort their hearts. Yes, Lord. Especially those that are born in Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Speak up, I say. Yes, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Bless the night, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. said another day's journey and I pray that the Lord will bless each and every prayer request amen according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus amen amen, amen. we certainly uh, thank God I want you to turn with me uh, to the book of St. Matthew St. Matthew 26 amen and uh, we want to uh, talk tonight uh, about the significance of the death of Jesus, but uh, main focus tonight uh, is uh, how Jesus prepares his servants. Amen. Jesus prepares his servants. Amen. And, and uh, it's important for us to take heed to preparation, you know, how he prepares us. Be sensitive and open to how he prepares us. And then we'll see also, too, different responses uh, of, of, of how people respond to, to Christ. Amen? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Amen. So as we look at our, 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 our lesson here today, uh, Matthew uh, chapter 26. It's important for us to understand uh, uh, the book of Matthew uh, doesn't really give you a chronological order of events. Matthew, he arranged his, uh, his, this gospel in, in, we call it topical. You know, he gives he gives uh, views of topics that are going on uh, are in the life of Christ. So he puts it in topics. Amen. So, so when we read this, it's not in chronological order. John, if you want to go see chronological order, the book of John, he gives you a chronology of, of the life of Christ. Amen. But, but Mark, Matthew and Mark, they give you topical orders. Amen. That's very important because if you if you don't if you don't understand that when we read this, if you're really paying attention, you have some questions. Well, did that happen then or did it happen before? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a little confused. <laughs> Amen. That's for all you Bible scholars. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So as we look here then uh, in Matthew chapter 26, I want to ask our reader to begin reading at verse number one. And it came to pass, mm -hmm. when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples. All right. When it says, when it came to pass, uh, Jesus finished all these sayings. And he's referring to uh, Matthew uh, 24. Uh, and that's when Jesus was giving uh, uh, the signs and the times of his coming. Amen. He was literally... Uh, Jesus' ministry intensified uh, after he gave and told and asked the disciples who do men say that I the son of man am and I'm the Christ and, and all y'all know the story then Jesus begins to say that at the end of those uh, verses he begins to tell them that the son of man is going to be, be betrayed and turned in the hands of sinful men. And then after three days, he's going to rise again. So after Jesus made those types of statements, his ministry then makes a drastic turn 
Because now he's realizing that his time is short. Amen. His time is at hand. And so now he begins to be pounding on the fact that uh, uh, the signs and the times of his coming and then uh, uh, that he's going to die and be risen again on the third day. And he's going to get up with all power. And he then trying to put into the mindset of, of the disciples that you have the great responsibility to carry on the ministry. Amen? That you're going to have to lay a foundation and take more responsibility in the ministry. Amen? You're going to have to step up. In other words, you know when uh, playing basketball, they say, one get hurt, next man up. Amen? Next man up. You follow me? And that's what he's saying today to us. Next man up. Amen? You've got to step it up uh, because, because he's soon to come. Amen. He's preparing us for his, his ultimate return. Yeah. Amen. Next man up. Uh, like the days of Lazar uh, 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 Fair, that means, you know, just willy-nilly. Uh, next man up. That's what Jesus is saying. He's trying to put it in them. I'm going to die. Uh, and next man up. All right. Read that first verse again. And it came to pass. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. He said unto his disciples. All right, so he's preparing them now for his transition. Amen. He's going to transition. Uh, his earthly ministry is coming to an end. His, his earthly ministry is coming to an end. And what's going to happen next? He's going to die. He's going to be risen again. And then uh, 53 days later, so to speak, he's going to send back the Holy Ghost. Uh, he's going to send them back an anointing. He's going to send them back some power. Amen. Hallelujah. So that they can carry out ministry. Uh, so they can work the work. Amen. Uh, when God gives you the Holy Ghost. He gives you power so you can work the work. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So read that again. I'm sorry. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings. Now notice, notice what he said. Finished all these sayings. He had concluded uh, his teaching upon uh, uh, about uh, the last days. What's going to happen uh, in the last days? You know, uh, uh, what's going to happen uh, uh, before his next return? Amen. Uh, there's going to be uh, 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 what's, what, what's going to happen? People going to be uh, living like they were in Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Is that happening now? Uh, thank you. You're going to be divers of earthquakes, divers places. Am I right? Ain't that happening now? Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and so we can go on and on. But, but the signs of his times, we can see that going on now. Amen? Hallelujah. So we have to prepare ourselves uh, for his ultimate return. Amen? All right, read. Read what it say. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings. He said unto his disciples. All right, now he turned to his disciples and he said. You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. Uh-huh. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. <laughs> so now, he can, like I said, he continues now to pound the fact that he's going to die. Uh, and that, that he's going to be betrayed and turned in the hands of sinful men. Amen. Now notice, notice. <clears throat> remember, I don't know if y'all remember, on Sunday I told you about uh, two. Uh, the, when, he, when, when, when he mentions two, uh, uh, that two is a representation of two opinions. Amen? Two opinions. Am I right? And now, now, now the disciples are of two opinions. They didn't think Jesus was going to die. They didn't want Jesus to die. Amen. But Jesus kept telling them he was going to die. In fact, when he died, they couldn't believe it. Uh, they couldn't believe that he died. They lost all hope. Uh, they were like, oh, man. They went not hear. Uh, when he had somebody had a pity party. Uh, thank you, Lord. Because they didn't believe it. Uh, uh, but now, 
But Jesus was telling them that I'm going to die. Huh? I'm going I'm to uh, leave the scene. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Now notice, it says, then after uh, two days uh, of the feast of the Passover, notice what he said, and the Son of Man uh, is to be betrayed and crucified. Jesus was preparing them. Uh, now notice, he said after two days, uh, then he was going to be crucified. So, so that tells us that this event here probably took place on a Wednesday. Uh, probably like we are right now, having Wednesday Bible study. Uh, Jesus had Wednesday Bible study with his peoples uh, because on Friday he was crucified. He was, he was, he was taken uh, and crucified. Am I right? So Jesus, Jesus was telling them the truth. Uh, in two days, uh, notice the significance of that. Uh, two days later, uh, he was put to death. Uh, two days. Uh, look at the immediacy of, of what happened, what took place. And Jesus was preparing them. Amen. Jesus is preparing us. Amen. For his ultimate return. How are we going to respond? Do we believe him? Uh, do we believe that he's soon to come? Uh, do we believe that he's going to crack the sky? Uh, come as a thief in the night? Uh, thank you, Lord. At the last trump, the dead in Christ are going to get up. Uh, and then we that are alive and remain are going to be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Do we believe that? Uh, thank you. If we truly believe that, we can live a different way. Huh? Thank you, Lord. I ain't saying y'all living raggedy, but I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, if, if the world believed that, we will put it that way. Uh, people would live a different way. If I only, if I knew that he was coming in two days, uh, I think I'd be forgiving a whole lot of people. Uh, thank you, Lord. I'd be doing doing a lot more praying, uh, a lot more fasting. Uh, am I right? Getting things right. I, I wouldn't let a whole lot of stuff bother me. Uh, hey, come on here. Why? Uh, well, because he's soon to come. Uh, and notice, he was preparing their hearts. Uh, the Lord is always preparing our hearts uh, for his return. Uh, there are events that are, are that happen in your life. Amen? That the Lord is preparing you. Uh, thank you, Lord, for his return. Uh, there's conditions and situations. He has conversations with you uh, in your prayer time uh, that prepares you, that's preparing you for his return. Amen? Hallelujah. Now notice what he said. He said, read. Then assemble together. No, oh, I'm still working on two. Uh, what does it say? You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. Uh-huh. Yep, Matthew 26 and 2. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. All right, now notice. Uh, so he's given, he's given them significant events. He said, after two days, the feast of the Passover. Now y'all remember if we were to study uh, the book of Exodus chapter number 12, it would give you the inauguration of the Passover. Amen. And what, what took place... Uh, that was significant for the Passover. What was that about? What was the Passover about? Doorpost, yep. The 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 All right. The children of Israel, they were in Egypt. Right? Amen. And then God sent Moses down there to tell Pharaoh to do what? Let my people go. Amen. Thank you, Lord, and, and, and God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Amen. Sent those ten plagues down there. And the last of the ten plagues was that God said he was going to kill the firstborn. Amen. The firstborn represents inheritance. Amen. He was going to kill them. Amen. But those that, 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 that uh, killed the sacrificial lamb, amen, and put the blood over the doorposts, then what? The death angel would do what? 
pass over them. When you see the blood, the death angel will pass over them. Amen? Thank you, Lord, and they shall live. Am I right? All right. So Jesus then, uh, he represents literally, bodily, the sacrificial lamb. Amen? Remember when uh, John the, the Baptist, uh, when he baptized Jesus uh, in the river Jordan, and when he saw Jesus afar off, he said, Behold, uh, the Lamb of God uh, that taketh away the sin of the world. He was making reference uh, to Jesus being the Passover sacrifice, yes. the Lamb that would be slain. Uh, and then when we see the blood, uh, thank you, you have the blood of Jesus over your life, then death angel will do what? Pass over you. Amen? So, so when we see, uh, and in the scriptures, and it's talking about the Passover, it's literally talking about death and redemption. Amen? That's what Jesus came to do. Amen? He came to die for you, and he came to redeem you. Yeah. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And some people, uh, 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 when they're looking at this, thank you, Lord, when we think of uh, the Passover, uh, there, was, there was a certain time of the year that the Passover occurred. And, and that, that was the, 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 the beginning of the Jewish year, which would have been April. Amen? In the book of Exodus, but I'll just tell you, same time. Uh, uh, the Lord told him on the 10th day, you get the Passover lamb uh, and inspect that lamb for four days. And then on the 14th day, uh, that's when you slay it and eat it. Amen? So, so Passover to the Jews was a time of preparation. Hallelujah. See, I'm going somewhere. Amen? God wants us to prepare ourselves uh, for the great celebration. Amen? For a great time of redemption. Amen? God wants us to get ready uh, for redemption, to be redeemed. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. Are you getting ready? I'm yeah. uh, being getting ready. Amen? To be redeemed. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, we see here then. He said, read that verse 2 again. You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. Uh-huh. So we're talking about the feast of the Passover. What does the feast of the Passover represent? Death and redemption and preparation. Amen. Preparing yourself. Then after, after they, they, they had that on the 14th day, after they slayed the, the lamb and ate it, they had another seven days uh, on the 20, until the 21st day. That was called the, the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Amen. Where they celebrated. Uh, thank you, Lord. The, the, the freedom uh, that the Lord had given unto them. Amen. Do you celebrate the freedom that Jesus has, has allotted you? Uh, thank you, Lord. Not, you're free uh, not, not to serve yourself, but you're free to serve the Lord. Uh, he freed you from the bondage uh, of sin and shame. Amen. Gave his life. He prepared you. Amen. So that you can have life uh, and that more abundant. Amen? All right? Now note it. Uh, so he talked about him being the Passover. Then he said, and the Son of Man shall be what? Betrayed. Betrayed and what? Now, when you see that term Son of Man, uh, that's significant. Because that represents Jesus as, as, in his humanity. Uh, being perfect, uh, being the perfect sacrifice uh, to be offered up to God without sin. Amen? Hallelujah. And he being perfect to be offered up without sin can also be touched with the feelings of your infirmities, your weaknesses. He identifies with you. Amen? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. And when you see the term uh, uh, Son of God, when he uses the Son of God, he's talking about his divinity now. 
uh, his, his holiness uh, as the king of kings uh, and the lord of lords uh, and as the prophet uh, that came to redeem us from sin. Hallelujah. Uh, Y'all got that? Hallelujah. Uh, That's beautiful if you put it together. Uh, uh, he, he's identifying you. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, he knows you. Uh, and he's the perfect sacrifice. Y'all remember in the book of John, in the book of Revelation, wherein John wept because there was nobody found uh, worthy to open the book. Uh, they told him, oh, John, stop your weeping. Uh, there's one that has overcome. Uh, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, he's worthy. Uh, worthy is the Lamb uh, that taken away the sins of the world. He's worthy. Uh, nobody else is found worthy. Jesus the only one that's found worthy. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen then. The Son of Man is to be what? To be what? Betrayed. 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 Huh? He's going to be betrayed. That word betrayed there means he's going to be turned over. Yes. Amen? Turned over. And when I, when I was reading that, I thought about the life of Christ. Huh? Uh, uh, no man taken his life. Amen. He laid it down. Uh, you know, when, when, when Pilate tried to front on him and say, hey, don't you know I got power to take your life? He said, oh, man, what you talking about? Uh, there's no power given unto you except the powers that be of heaven. And he said, don't you know I got power to call down legions? Uh, hallelujah, legions from heaven. Hallelujah. You don't take my life. Hallelujah. Crucified. Amen. And he was going to be crucified according to the scriptures. Amen. According to the word of God. Amen. Not a bone of his would be broken. Amen. Hallelujah. He'd be pierced in the side. Uh, pierced in his hand. Amen. For the crown of thorns upon him. Be beat with. Hallelujah. Wounded for our transgressions. I am bruised for our iniquity. Yeah. Amen. And with his stripes, we were going to be healed. Yeah. Uh, set free, delivered. Yeah. Uh, come on, give him a praise. Yeah. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Lord. my brother. That's amazing. He got both shut. Think about that. Like, not one bone was broken. Not one bone was broken. They stuck a uh, spike through his hand and his feet. Yes. They pierced him. Javelin, you know. Yeah, with swords. Still no bones broken. No bones broken. Right? So the scriptures wouldn't be broken. Amen. Uh, he's powerful. Amen. Jesus lived his life according to the scriptures. Amen. We must live our lives according to the scriptures. Amen. According to promise. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, my God. All right, we're first in. All right, now we are we ready to move on now. <laughs> All right. Then assembled together the chief priests uh -huh. and the scribes yeah. and the elders of the people uh -huh. unto the palace of the high priest uh -huh. who was called Caiaphas. All right. Then notice what happened. All right. Jesus told his disciples, right, that he was going to die. He was literally preparing them for his death so that when it happened they wouldn't lose heart. Amen? Bad things happen in life. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. But the Lord prepares us. Yeah. If, we, if we listen to the Spirit, yeah. he prepares us yeah. so we don't lose heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, weeping may endure for a night yeah. uh, but joy of coming in the morning if you hold on, yeah. uh, wait till Shiloh comes, uh, because it's coming. Yeah. Amen. Cast out away your confidence, for it has great recompense and reward. Yes. For you have need of what? Patience. After you have suffered, yeah. uh, you might receive the promise. Yeah. Amen. Uh, wait on the Lord. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Lord. He prepares us. Amen. He's preparing us right now. <laughs> uh, 
He said, he said, then he said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. And I'll be with thee always, even unto the end of the world. That's why you got to hold on to Jesus. Huh? That's why he, he's an anchor. Huh? That you should hold on and be steadfast. Huh? Wait on God. Uh, so, so Jesus uh, uh, then assembled together uh, the chief priests, notice, and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas. All right? So now we see uh, how different people are preparing for Jesus. Huh? Jesus was having a meeting with his disciples, preparing them for his death, burial, and resurrection until he comes. And these guys here in verse number three, they were preparing for Jesus to kill him. Huh? To murder him. Huh? Two different responses. All right, now we see here. He said, then symbol together, notice, 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 the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people, uh, and, and unto the palace of the high priest, uh, who was called Caiaphas. Now, these were all the religious leaders, all the religious leaders, all of the religious leaders coming against Jesus. All of them. Not, not just one, but all. Alright? Dig and feel? Was, was this like uh, early in the morning? Like, morning? Well, I don't know. Well, it's in the beginning of the day. So, yeah. so the day started at, after midnight. So they had two 12 hours. Well, no, the, the, the day began with them at uh, so, 6, 6, 6 a.m. Yeah, 6 a.m. So it was early. Yeah, it was early. Amen. Now notice, notice. Uh, and they came into the palace. Notice where they met. At the high priest. Amen. The one who was supposed to be the, the most righteous of the people. Amen. But at this time, uh, in, in, in the book of, in the Old Testament, the high priests, they were descendants from Aaron. Amen. From a righteous line, Aaron. But when the Romans took over, uh, they, they, they put in position high priests that would be sensitive to their needs. Uh, so, so they took out the, the lineage from Aaron, now they put in people who would be straw men for them. Uh, who, would, who would help them to rule the people. Uh, thank God. Ain't that, ain't that just like the devil? Uh, thank God. Just put in people that were wicked uh, so that they can do their bidding. And thought like him. And in other words, politicians, if you're like it. I ain't saying all politicians. Uh, but but they, that was a political position. Uh, and, if, and if the high priest didn't do what they wanted them to do, they got rid of them. Uh, and, and it was a lucrative position. Uh, it was all about money. Amen. So they corrupted the system. Amen. You got to watch out for corrupt systems. Amen. Uh, don't let the church become corrupt. Amen. Don't let your don't let your position uh, that God has given you become corrupt. Amen. Amen. Don't live for men, live for God. Amen. Am I right? Hallelujah. Y'all let me teach up in here. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. Not my vocation where would you been called? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. My brother. Mr. It's just a uh, repeat of history. Uh-huh. That's what's going on today. Yeah. In, in, in politics. Yeah. The same thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and the one person, I ain't gonna call names, uh -huh. uh, is doing the people's bidding. Right. 
and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. Trickery and kill him. Read. But they said, not on the feast day. Not on the feast day. Lest there be an uproar among the people. Now notice, he said, the chaos said not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. He wasn't really concerned about uh, 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 Jesus and his life. He was concerned about his position. Right? If, if, if there was an uproar and the, the, the uh, what's the Roman leader? Uh, Caesar. If Caesar found out about it, and put his job in jeopardy. Get fired. So he said, oh, no, hold on here. Let's, let's not go after Jesus uh, because, because during this time, the Passover, it was a high day. They had over probably uh, uh, 2,000 visitors coming to Jerusalem uh, on that particular day for that particular feast and festival. Because if you were Jewish, it was... Uh, your uh, duty to go in and have Passover. Amen? It was, it, was, it was part of your heritage. It was part of who you were. Amen? And you had to go there. You had to go there. If you wouldn't, if you didn't, you'd be excommunicated from the church. My God, who we had that on Sunday? If you, you got it from the church on Sunday. <laughs> we're going to ask you something. <laughs> My brother? I was just thinking of the word census, as you were saying, they had to be there. They had to be there. Yeah. Yep. They had to be there. What, wasn't an option. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And, and it was part of the Jewish heritage. And not only did they have to be there, they wanted to be there. Uh, to celebrate. And that's what was going on. And, and the people that they were afraid of was the people from Galilee. Uh, that's where Jesus was raised. Uh, and they were afraid that they would hear about their shenanigans and cause an uproar because Jesus was loved among the people. The leaders hated him, but the people loved him. Amen? Hallelujah. I got it. I got it. That's a whole shot. If it wasn't up for it, they would have put them all. Put them all out. Put them all together. Yep. And then the whole Jewish faith. Yep. Because the Romans would have said, hey, okay, uh, because of this up for we're going to do all y'all in. Yep. And he would have been in that number. Been in that number. Yeah. So he said, hey, hold on. Yep. Let's not go that route. Right. He had been the first to go. Yeah, he had been the first to go. Right. So he protected himself. Right. Amen. All right, let's look at it. What's that? What verse we in? Six. Uh -huh. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment. All right, read with you in verse what? Seven. seven. All right. Because six ran into seven. Okay, read, read, read. Read six again. Five. Read five. Yeah, thank you. Oh, five. Yeah. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. All right, number six. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in oh. the house of Simon the leper. All right, now, Jesus, now, he, he went to Bethany. Now we're talking about preparations. Now Jesus went, was in Bethany, and he went into Simon the, uh, into the house of Simon the leper. Now, uh, Bethany was where Martha, uh, Lazarus, and Mary did. Yeah, right. Amen? And this Simon here is, is historically supposed to be uh, their relative. Amen? Uh, 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 history says that this was Martha and Mary's uh, and Lazarus' father. Amen? Uh, and, and Simon, the leper, uh, he, he had leprosy. The reason why I identify him as Simon, the leper, was because he had leprosy and Jesus healed him. Amen? 
And, and that the reason why he's telling you that is, is because that was a sign of the Messiah. Uh, that the Messiah would heal those that had leprosy. Amen. So he's increasing your faith about Jesus and his power and his Messiahship. Amen. That he's the one. Amen. That's how he was recognized. Amen. By his signs and his wonders. So how do we recognize Jesus today? Huh? Thank you know, by signs, miracles, and wonders. Amen. Uh, miracles are still happening. Amen. Don't y'all believe in miracles? Um, don't y'all believe in signs and miracles? Um, my sister. You see the one? Or should we look for another? Yeah. And then they said, you go back and tell John. Yeah. That the blind is still Come on. The blind and eyes are still being opened. Yeah. So that's the deaf ears are still being opened. Come on. Hallelujah. And the lame is still walking. Uh -huh. This must be the one. This must be the one. Those were his signs. Yeah. And the lepers are being healed. Yeah. Uh, those were the signs. Amen. Hallelujah. What what type of sign do you know that the what the Lord has done for you that you know that He's the Messiah? Yes. That He's the one. Yes. Huh? Hallelujah. Y'all with me today? Yes. Uh, he has to have done something for you. Yes. Uh, and to you, my God. And, and then through you. <laughs> that he's real. Yes. Huh? That he's real. Hallelujah. Yes. You know what always intrigues me when I go to a conference and the Holy Ghost get the movement and fall down? And then I see hundreds of people just shouting and speaking in tongues, rejoicing in the Lord. And I say, look at this. Uh, this thing is real. Uh, it's real. Uh, hallelujah. And then when I uh, uh, caught that plane and uh, went across the pond over there in London and they had a service over there. And the people were singing the songs of Zion, and the anointing was falling. I said, "Oh, this is the same God that was in Erie. Oh, this is the same God that was in Erie. That's real. He's real. He's real. Uh, he's real. Uh, I can feel it in my head. Don't get me to talk about it. I can feel it in my head. I feel it in my feet. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, uh, you mess with him. He'll mess with you back. Uh, uh, he's real. Uh, he's real. Uh, he saved you from death off. He's real. Uh, how many of how you almost came to death? Uh, hallelujah. And he made death behave. Uh, he's real. Uh, gave you comfort. Gave you peace. Uh, he's real. Uh, uh, ain't that a song? He's real. Jesus is real to me. Uh, uh, come on here. Uh, so I'm not going to act like he ain't real. Uh, I ain't going to act like he ain't done nothing for me. Uh, uh, I'm not going to be all forgiving. Uh, thank you, Lord. He's real. Uh, he's going to move with you. I'm going to move with you. Uh, and when I hear about your testimony, I'm going to rejoice. Uh, because he's real. Huh? Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's, that's, that's why he put that in the, in the scripture, talking about Simon the leper. Yeah. Letting you know that he was a leper. Yeah. Uh, but now he's here. Yeah. Uh, I was a sinner. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm here. Yeah. I was dead. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm alive. Yeah. 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 Uh, set free. I'm yeah. uh, delivered. Amen? Yeah. Uh, how many of you can say that today? Yeah. Uh, you set free. Yeah. Heal. Deliver. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. My God. My God. I was, I was, some guy, I don't know his name, he rang the doorbell, he was going to go upstairs to the meeting. And, and you know, I, I was sneezing at the time. <laughs> and I went over the door. I said, man, I got, I got, I got to sneeze. I got to sneeze. And, you know, I wasn't trying to ignore him. I was telling him. 
And then he said, okay, no problem. He started walking. Then he stopped and he said, God bless you in advance. And man, that thing did something in my spirit. I, I said, I said, that's what he did. He blessed us in advance. Not before the foundation of the world. He blessed us. Let me do it. Has God blessed you? Huh? Before you came to this earth, he blessed you. Huh? That stirred me up. Hallelujah. Huh? Thank you. The next one we go over the book of uh, Ephesians chapter number one. And it says how uh, uh, he blessed you. Yeah. Hallelujah. In advance. Yeah. Uh, before you got here, blessings were waiting on you. Yeah. Uh, before you got here, deliverance was waiting on you. Yeah. Uh, before you got here, all your sins had been forgiven. Uh, eternal life was waiting on you. Uh, blessed you in advance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, excited. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Predestinate. Yeah. All right, where we at? What verse we in? Yeah, read six over here. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, All right. in the Jesus. house of Simon the leper. All right, so that's why he got that in there. He went to Simon the leper. Amen. Read. There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment. All right, now, that, that woman was, was narrow. Amen. The scripture tells us that. She cracked that box and wiped uh, her, his feet with her head. Amen. She undid it. Wiped it. Amen. All right. Read. And poured it on his head. And now, and poured it on his head. And he sat at me. All right. He sat at me. Amen. Now, that, 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 that sitting at me, uh, when they. Uh, she anointed him. Uh, we, we all know the story, so I'm not getting ahead of myself. She anointed him for his death. Amen. As a sacrificial lamb. Yeah. Him sitting at meat uh, is a reference to how they were to eat that sac Passover. They were to eat it reclining. Amen. They were be, to be in a reclining position. So Jesus is fulfilling the scriptures uh, as the sacrificial lamb. Uh, in a reclined position. Uh, we did everything according to the script. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Now notice this. There came a woman having an alabaster box. That's a, that's a box that was uh, a, a perfume. Yes. Amen. And it wasn't just any kind of perfume. Back then, perfume to women was real precious. Amen. It was like uh, 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 what's the name, some of the names from the expensive perfume? Chanel. Chanel. Gloria Van de Bell. Pleasure. Huh? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And this, and this, this particular, so, so, so we know brothers, but with this we should get. Uh, uh, this particular perfume uh, and this this box, it was worth a year's worth of wages. Uh, so it was, it was expensive. Amen. And 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 not only I want to get this in your mind. Not only was it expensive, but it was a treasured possession. Uh, hard to get, treasure. She valued it. It may have been the most valuable thing in her life. Huh? You follow? Notice what she did. Out of basketball, notice the scripture says, very well, precious ointment, precious, huh? and poured it upon his head as he said at me, read but when his disciples saw it, uh -huh. they had indignation. They, what's the word indignation mean? They were disgusted. They were upset. Amen. What next? <laughs> Why would they get this? Huh? Ain't that like people? Huh? You trying to worship the Lord, they get upset with you. It ain't got nothing to do with you. If, if I got a hand from the chandelier, what's that to you? Huh? Uh, ain't that what Jesus said? Uh, to, to, 
to one of the disciples, uh, uh, Peter, I think it was, who's John? Right, right, say it, say it, tell me, Timothy. He asked, what to do with this man? Uh-huh. What did he say? What did he say? No, Jesus made mention about John being alive until he came back. Uh huh. The disciples said, So you mean he's going to be here until you come back? Uh huh. And Jesus told them, Now, what is that to you whether I say he live or die? Right. It has nothing to do with you. Nothing. You, you follow me. Right. Nothing to do with you. You follow after me. Right. It don't cost us nothing to mind our own business. Yeah, I mean it. It's free. It's free. It's free. It's free. Right? Free. If I want to turn around in circles and worship you, yeah. yeah. ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ain't got nothing to do with <laughs> Right. Right. And her sacrifice yes. was based on her relationship with Jesus. Yes. She knew what he did for huh? her. He, yeah, he saved her. Yeah. Huh? And, and he saved her brother. Uh, and he sent it to God. Uh, healed it. Amen. Uh, her brother was dead. Her brother was dead. She said, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. Uh, uh, and Jesus said, He's going to rise again. This is Lazarus' sister. Yeah, that's Lazarus' sister, man. I thought that was the one he forgave. That's what I thought. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is Lazarus' sister. Yeah, John, bring that up. The book of John. Yeah, yeah. I'm an advocate. Yeah, you've been so mad. She was the one who said it. Jesus said it. Said it his feet. And, uh, and she believed. Come on, Phil. Bring it up. She believed what she heard. And she did something about it. Come on. Yeah. Come on. She chose the people. She chose the better part. Y'all remember? Uh, Martha. Uh, and uh, when Jesus went to the house, uh, Mary and Martha was in the house. Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet getting the Bible study. Martha was in the kitchen uh, working. And she came to Jesus to rebuke Mar uh, Mary. Say, hey, you know, tell her to get up and come help me. And Jesus said, oh, Martha, you're coming about many things. Martha, Martha, Martha. How many Marthas we got in the house? <laughs> Oh, oh. Huh? 
precious city. How many of y'all love it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Put up my feet and my hands. <laughs> love him, love him, love him, love him. Yes, huh? He brought us out. Uh, did he, Sylvester? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. My, 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 my. Think back where you grew up from. Amen. Huh? Wow. Uh, we have football. My body. My mind going back. Where we at? 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 Where And what's that word indignation mean? Disgust. Disgust. Huh? They, dis they got disgust. Disgusted yes. by her actions. Read it. Say, uh -huh. to what purpose is this waste? Now notice, they call it waste. She was loving upon Jesus. Huh? And his disciples called it waste. She remember back in the beginning? Jesus said, in two days, and that two represented diverse opinions. Yeah. Huh? They didn't value Jesus. But yet, he was going to send them to save the world. Huh? There need to be some work, some changes. Huh? They called it waste. Huh? People ain't going to understand your prayers. People ain't going to understand your worship. Huh? But don't let that Stop you from worshiping him. Amen. Don't let that stop you from praising him. Yeah. You're not doing it to be seen of men. Amen. You did it to be seen of him. Because yeah. you love him. Yeah. My brother? Yeah, that's what you can't, you know, they just claiming that they love Jesus. Right. Claim it. Claim it. So now the lady comes with the oil and mm -hmm. you pour it on Jesus. Now, now the love you say you have. Not, not the oil, the, the oil that's more important than your love for Jesus. Come on. Oh, they were trying to say Right. It was it's, probably, like, it's like somebody threw oil on you, and I'm claiming I love right. you. Be, Yo, what you doing? Why you pouring that on Bishop? Yeah. Now, they, they probably were saying in their mind, uh, you could have got the family dog brand of first baby. <laughs> <laughs> with that cheap stuff. Huh? Get that stuff pouring on you. Huh? Father, smoke like that. Yeah. Did it feel? I think what happened with that scenario, this brought out Judas's love of money. Because yep. that's what motivated him. Yep. I believe that turned him to start, I have to give you some money. I'm right. Right. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about him. Because he in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, that was the next day. You know, that could have been sold and given to the to the poor. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You know, all kinds of excuses. Yeah. Jealousy. Amen. Jealousy. Right. The worst thing you can be done is you be jealous of somebody else's prayer. Jealous of somebody else's worship. Huh? Huh? Don't, don't, don't you have opportunity to get your praise? Didn't he give you a worship? Huh? Don't be jealous of my praise. Don't be jealous of somebody else's praise. Huh? Praise him for yourself. Huh? Thank you. If, if the Lord, if the Lord blessing somebody, don't be jealous of that. Rejoice. Be thankful. Huh? Because you could be next in line. Right. The way you respond to their blessing determines if you go back to the end of the line or stay where you go. Right. Right. And, and not only that, don't be jealous of an anointing that God has on somebody. How God is using somebody.
see God using somebody. Uh, I, and I'm saying, man, I wish God used me like that. And I get jealous. I, that's why he ain't using you. Because you ain't, you, ain't, you ain't trying to get your mind right. You focused on the wrong thing. Jealousy yeah. screws over yeah. into other people. Yeah. He says, that jealousy is crueler than the grave. Yeah. You know, so, so you know, um, we all want to cheat, right? right? Yeah. If, if we down and we lose and you hit a three-pointer, man, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't going to get upset with you. Yeah. We all got a victory. Yeah. We all won. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Whether he use you or he use me. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Huh? And if you go to a, a, a council or something, Bishop, and, and, and the sister here is preaching, and she tear the house up, I should be tearing that flow up with her. Yeah. You know, because she making all of us good. Yeah. All of all Bishop's teaching, yeah. all of everything, she makes all of us look good. Yeah. So it's just not her, it's all of us. That's it. I was, I was, I was in a board meeting. And Bishop said, you know, you announced who the speaker was. And he said, look, uh, not that the individual was a bad speaker. He was just trying to tell us how to react. Mm -hmm. He said, now, nah, if the preacher is preaching, okay, y'all encourage the preacher, and he'll preach back. That's right. He'll preach back. That's right. Uh, That's true. And so if you sit down on the preacher, yes. you know, then that, that, you know, that's hard to cut through. It is. But when you got some amens going on, yes. thank you, Jesus, Lord. <laughs> that's motivation. Yes. Some of y'all look at me like I said. But that's, that's how it works. Yes. You don't believe me? Let me put you up on the stuff. <laughs> Some says looking at you. Just looking at you, you know. Yeah, <laughs> now uh, But now you say Amen. Uh, you say thank you, Jesus. And if there's some praying going on, uh, we'll get through that. Uh, then we'll all rejoice. We'll all get something. Amen. Uh, it's good stuff. I'll say sometimes you got to do. Radical praise. Yes. I, I believe that's what this woman did. She did something radical. Uh -huh. It was unexpected. It was, it was like, who would do something like that? Right. I like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all got one more radical praise in you? <laughs> oh, that is it. Unexpected. Yeah. Uh -huh. And she did it out of love. She wasn't trying to be seen. And, and as we get into it, uh, I gotta say it anyway. We ain't there yet. But she was doing it because she was the, really the only one that understood that Jesus was going to die. The other disciples, they didn't understand it. They didn't believe it. But she believed it. Uh, she had the discernment that he was going to die. Amen. So let me let me give him his flowers while he's living. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let, let me show him how much I love him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. My brother. Hey! Somebody said grateful. Are you grateful about Jesus? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm grateful. Amen. Amen. Yeah. My brother. See what I'm saying? We uh -oh. encourage one another, you know, like these other preachers. Praise and worship going on, like you know, whatever whatever part of the service it is, get in, get in it. You know what I'm saying? That 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 brings forth the presence. Yeah. You know, sitting back, you know, uh, feeling a certain way about Walk on the Lord. Who's ever, who's ever the Lord is using at the time. Walk on the Lord. Whatever's going yeah. on in the service. Walk on the Lord. Then it's, you know, yeah, yeah. That ain't no good. It's hindrance. Right. Yeah. Stumbling block. You know, yeah. Huh? So now and, God might show up, and then because you're feeling that way, like you say, now God can't do what he want to do in you. Right. And, can I say this part? If you're not paying attention, huh, 
and 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 uh, not present in mind and spirit to what's going on. That's a hindrance too. Yeah. You missed the anointing. You missed it. Right over your head. Right over your head. You'll miss it. Pay attention. You'll miss it. Amen. You don't want to miss it. That's like a wasted trip. You ever go into a store and what you wanted was there? A wasted trip. Amen. I don't want to come to the house of God. Huh? And that what I want is not there. Huh? That's a wasted trip. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. You hear me, Sister Jackie? Hallelujah. Because every time you come to Christian ministry, I'm going to put it out there. Uh, uh, full acceptation. Uh, you'll find something. Uh, if you're coming from the bishop, maybe come from the minister, or if you come from one of the members. Uh, or the Lord will just speak to you yourself. You'll get it. Uh-huh. But me, you have not always. Uh, because I'm going to go away. 
I'm going away to prepare a place for you. Yeah. That where I am, there you shall be also. Read it. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, uh -huh. she did it for my burial. She did it for what? My burial. My burial. She understood. The others didn't understand. Amen? Uh, they missed the whole point. Uh, she caught it. Uh, she wasn't carnal minded. She was spiritual minded. She was focused on Jesus. She sat at his feet. She received his word. Uh, understood the time. Understood the season. Amen? You, we, we, when we read and study the Bible, we have to understand the time. Be like the children of Issachar. Understanding the times and the seasons. Amen? Uh, we live in a time and a season now where we need to draw nigh to him. Yeah. Uh, because he's soon to come back. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, read. 13. Uh-huh. Verily I say unto you. Yes. So whatsoever this gospel shall be preached uh -huh. in the whole world, uh -huh. there shall also this, that this woman have done, be told for memorial. Now what she did moved. Amen. He said, whatever what she has done shall be spoken of as a memorial for wherever this gospel is preached. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because she was motivated by love. Amen. The gospel is based on love. Amen. And this is similar to what God said. Amen. When he said, uh, 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 God so loved the world that he gave his wealth. Only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. She was motivated by love. Yeah. Huh? Her, and, and her faith. Yeah. Huh? To give it all to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be motivated by love and faith to give it all to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Give it all to him. Huh? Don't hold back nothing. Live for him that died for you. Yes. Amen? Amen. Uh, don't hold back nothing. Huh? You live for him that gave his life for you. He paid it all. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, barely for a righteous man would some die. Yes. Peradventure for a good man some would what? Yes. Even dare to die. But God yes. uh, commended his love toward us. Uh, in that law we were yet sinners. Uh, Christ died for the young God. God gave it all. Amen. And for this cause was God, was Christ made manifest uh, to destroy the work of the enemy in your life. Amen. So that should give you a right to praise him. Uh, give it all to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Do we think of these things? Amen. He paid it all. All to him I yeah. huh? All right. Do you feel I got six minutes, but I got another dude to come. Yeah. Uh, the Magi, wise men, from Egypt, Egypt, when he was born. Yeah. Uh, they represent the, the, the women's type to get. Yeah. From gold, myrrh, and frankincense. Yeah. And each one of them identified his identity. Yeah. And, and, and one of them, I think, was for his birth. Yeah, the frankincense. The, yeah, frankincense and myrrh. Yeah, the myrrh. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And what Mary did was an example to us. Amen. She was an example to us. Thank you, Lord. Don't matter how much it costs, pay the price. Amen. I guarantee you, he paid more of the price. <laughs> All right, my brother. Um, gold was for the sovereignty. Yeah, it represented God. Yeah. The frankincense was for the worship. Yes, I love it. The was for the preservation. Yes, yes. Representing his death. Yeah, yeah. All right, read. What verse read? All right, read. Here we go. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, uh -huh. went unto the chief priests. All right, now note. Then one of the twelve, and his name was what? Judas Iscariot. 
Judas Iscariot reads. And said unto them, uh -huh. What will you give me? Uh -huh. And I will deliver him unto you. Now, Judas heard the word of Jesus. Amen? Judas was one of the apostles. Amen? He had a position with Jesus. Amen? And he heard the word of Jesus. He had opportunity to do great things. He had talent. Amen? That's why Jesus made him uh, uh, in charge of money. Amen? But he took his talent and used it for evil. And somewhere along the line, he begins to despise and hate Jesus. Huh? And then, listen to me. Then he sought opportunity not only to betray him, but to kill him. That's the worst thing we can ever have. Most people just are comfortable with betraying somebody. But if you got somebody that wants to betray you uh, and kill you, you gotta watch out for him. Huh? There's people out there like that. That not only want to betray you, but they want to kill you. Amen. My brother? He said how he had position with Jesus. Yeah, he had position. And there's one scripture that says that at some point Satan entered into him. Right. He wasn't always this. At some point Satan entered into him. Yeah. And he began to function like well, um, um, let's say it this way. There was something there already that the enemy had to work with. Right? Even though Jesus chose him? Yes, even though Jesus chose him. Right? There was something there that, that the enemy uh, was working with that was already in him. Huh? The works of the flesh. Follow? And he never subscribed to the teachings of Jesus. Follow? Let me, let me, let me say it this way. He never really loved Jesus. Huh? He never really took hold of the teachings of Jesus. He was there in body, but not in spirit. So the word never got in him. But he was open to what the devil had. His, and the devil worked on what was already in him. Greed. Lust. Envy. Jealousy. You follow me? I'm teaching up in here. If you don't receive this word uh, and let the word transform you, those things that you came in to the church with, the devil will magnify it and use it against you. Judas did love Jesus. Because if you loved him, you wouldn't have sought opportunity to kill him. Huh? He, they didn't approach him. He approached them. Huh? Say, hey, what would you give me? So that tell you that he already hated him. He was probably jealous of his miracles, signs, and wonders. The following that he had. Huh? Don't be jealous. Blessed are he who are not offended in me. Huh? But his problem was he was with the master and never took in the teaching of the master. He was just an attendee. He was just on the road. On the road with position. With opportunity. Huh? He had a bishopric. Huh? And he lost it. Because of his own jealousy. And Amen. Amen. My God, I feel the 
by the fire is changing now. Get rid of any. Get rid of them. You know if you're jealous. You know if you're envious. Get rid of it. It'll take you out. The enemy is using against you. Hate you. Lying, murder, debate. Strife. He'll use it against you. But you got to take it in the word. Amen. My brother. Yeah. Because the scriptures have to be fulfilled. Yes. Oh yeah, he knew it. Yeah, so that's why he, that's why he chose it. Yes. And and you know, yeah, because because God knew the ending from the beginning. Right. Right? He they knew what Judas would do. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But the reason why God uh, speaks so hostile against Judas. Uh, was because Judas had every opportunity to repent, to turn, but he decided to take his own life. Amen. He never gave uh, uh, the Lord an opportunity or a chance to save him. Uh, so he said, that's why I said it would be better for him to not have been born. Uh, that's the, one of the harshest things that I've ever heard the Lord say about somebody. It's better for you not to be born. Why? Because of, of his actions and his deeds. Although he knew he was going to do that. That's why he could speak prophetically about it. But God is merciful. He's gracious. And we all know that that, that, that was all uh, uh, a part of the plan. We knew it. Huh? But I'm telling you why God looked on him like that. It's because uh, uh, he, he, he did what he did. He repented. No, if I don't say he repented. He repented. I looked it up. I can't because this came up in the Bible study once before. So I have to go back and look. See, see. And he repented. Uh, but before true repentance could take place, he hung himself. Wow. Wow. Dishonored. Dishonored the position. Dishonored his call. Dishonored his election. Uh, guilt. guilt. He didn't die. Uh, another person in the Bible that God was extremely upset with. Esau, what did he say? Sold his birthright? Hey, hey, no. Judas, say it with Judas. Judas, if we can say it, he sold his birthright. Huh? To greed and lust. Huh? God, what did he say? What did I say about uh, Esau? Huh? Why? Why did he hate him? In the womb. Before he did anything, he hated him. Because he knew he was going to do uh, Why? Why did he hate him? Because he didn't honor his birth. He didn't honor the position. He didn't honor the birth. Honor your position in Christ. Amen? Amen. Honor what God has done from you. He, he took you from the dung here. Yeah. <laughs> and then while we you were yet a sinner, he cleaned you up. Yeah. When you were dead in trust he cleaned you up and put you with a royal priesthood. Put you with a holy family. And you know I don't say it enough. This profession is the highest profession that you can ever have. Being a saint, a child of God, don't get any better than that. Huh? It's the utopia. Huh? You got you to value your position in Christ. Yes. Value what God has done for you. Yes. Uh, don't despise it. Don't hate it. And then when you are here or when you're studying the word, receive it. If you don't receive it, the enemy will find something in you and use it against you. Your anger, he'll use it against you. Huh? Uh, your evil desire, he'll use it against you. 
Out of your jealousy, he'll use it against you. Out of your envy, he'll use it against you. Out of your low self-esteem, he'll use it against you. Your pride, high-mindedness, he'll use it against you. Amen? Wow. I ain't want to go all like that. This is the Lord. This is the Lord. This is the Lord. Don't despise. Huh? Amen? Those two individuals despise. You know who else? My God. We just dropped it in my mind. You know who else despised? King Saul. Huh? King Saul despised his position as king. God made him king. Took him among the stars. Made him king. Huh? Saul hated him. Huh? His position. He, he always made an excuse for his action. Huh? To where God took the spirit away from him. My, my God, don't ever take you away I can't, I can't bear it. Took the spirit away from him. Amen. Huh? Now, oh, oh. He took the spirit away from him and they gave him an evil spirit. Now, Lord, my God. Look at that judgment. Saul thought he was doing what was right. Right. But it was bringing his God. I'm going to save you, son. Mm. For myself. Yeah, for myself. He didn't lie about it. Did you do the will of God? Yeah, I did the will. What mean at the leading, leading of the sheep and the lowing of the oxen? Huh? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes, it is. Huh? Come on here. Now, this is good stuff right here. Put you on your toes, make you think. Build you up. Build you up. Oh, they do good. Diana, build you up on it. Oh, they do good. My brother, where oh, we gotta go? Yeah, he, he, uh, he had kind of had something strongly against King Solomon too. After King Solomon he told him not to sleep on the hill up with Oh yeah. 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 After that, yeah. Yeah, we should so, take him to King. 